Hello everyone, welcome to our new session on cyber threat hunting. In this session, we will learn about threat hunting, why security leaders need it, how to get started with threat hunting, its architecture, and three pillars, threat hunting process and models. Let's get started. At its essence, cyber threat hunting can be quite similar to real-world hunting. It requires a uniquely skilled professional possessed of considerable patience, critical thinking, creativity, and a keen eye for spotting prey, usually in the form of network behavior abnormalities. As a security leader, you may think, that what exactly is the hunter looking for? And why do we need them? Shouldn't our systems be sufficiently protected, since we already implemented the most recent cybersecurity solutions? That's an easy question. The central pillar of threat hunting is understanding the simple fact that no system can be considered 100% protected. Even with the best and most current technology, there is always the chance that some advanced threat will be able to evade the several security layers protecting a company, and that is what we are looking for. Well, threat hunting is a proactive approach to cybersecurity and information security. After solidifying their endpoint security and incident response strategies, to mitigate the known malware attacks that are inevitable today, organizations can then start to go on the offensive. They are ready to dig deep and find what hasn't yet been detected, and that's exactly the purpose of threat hunting. Threat hunting is the process of searching for cyber threats that are lurking undetected in a network. This is a complementary proactive approach to the reactive approach of standard SOC activity. To get started, you should have a mature security setup capable of ingesting multiple sources of information and storing it in a way that lets you access it. A basic setup should include automated blocking and monitoring tools such as firewalls, antivirus, endpoint management, network packet capture, and SIEM tool. You will also need access to threat intelligence resources so you can look up IP addresses, malware hashes, indicators of compromise and more. Finally, you will need a tool that allows you to bring together your disparate data sets and slice and dice them in a way that reveals insights with the least possible effort. Threat hunting can involve a massive amount of information, so while it is a human-led effort, you will certainly need some computer assistance to make the task more manageable. Once you have all the tools in place and working together, you will also need a team with enough people to manage the technology and data. Threat hunting is never going to be the first priority. To start, it may not even be a full-time role, maybe just a few hours a week of one person's time. Let's discuss the threat hunting architecture. Threat hunting is the step-by-step -step approach of proactively looking for signs of malicious activity within enterprise networks, without having initial knowledge of specific indications to look for, and subsequently ensuring that the malicious activity is removed from your systems and networks. It's a technique that involves accumulating samples from different sources to assist in profiling malicious threat actors. Threat hunting can be either active or passive threat hunting. It has four models and are supported by three pillars at the bottom that is, logs, packets and process. Logs provide a record of events that have occurred in an enterprise. In them we can find a record of what actions were performed by an attacker in an enterprise. Packets are the data that flows through a network. In them we can find a record of what was communicated and how it was communicated in a network at a given point of time. Process provides us with the exact record of what effect an attacker had on an enterprise. Now let's discuss the threat hunting process. First step is to collect and process data. It is essential to plan ahead and define what data must be collected and where it will be centralized and processed. The SIEM solution is a hunter's best friend. Next step is to establish a hypothesis. It is very important to know what you are hunting for, and it all begins with a business-oriented hypothesis based on the actual company context. The best approach is starting with simple, high-level questions that are meaningful for the company's cybersecurity strategy. Next step is to hunt. A hunter must excel in technical expertise, combining areas such as information security, forensic science, and intelligence analysis, but must also have a lot of patience. Next step is to identify threats. Once your hypothesis identifies a threat, understand how it affects the company, before defining the best course of action. And lastly, respond to threats. After a threat is confirmed and the extent of the attack is known, 
the next step is creating a proper response. Firstly fix the gap immediately or isolate the affected patch. Next, we have to understand what happened in order to improve security and prevent similar attacks in the future. Let's discuss about the different threat hunting models. First, we have event-based hunting. All threat hunting models depend on how strong your hypothesis is. Every hypothesis should be based on event observations and a deep understanding of each log source, that is, how it has been placed and utilized in the company. Next, we have IOC-based hunting. An IOC is a bit of forensic data, primarily data found in system log transactions or files, that indicates potentially malicious activity on a system or on the network. It is like a fingerprint for a cyber threat. IOC-based hunting is one of the easiest ways to find a specific threat. Next, we have entity-based hunting. Understanding an organization's network posture is a complex challenge. It does not matter how many resources you have, threat hunters always need to prioritize hunting network segments to get maximum throughput. Entity-based hunting is concentrated on high-risk users and high-value assets. Lastly, we have tactics, techniques, and procedures-based hunting. Threat hunters cannot always depend on IOCs. Being a threat hunter, we need to understand what technologies attackers use, how effectively attackers are able to weaponize that technology against us, and what are the different ways attacker can adapt and change. We also need to understand what their primary goals are and how they would move laterally in an organization. I hope the content was useful. Please subscribe to stay on top of all their upcoming videos. Thank you.